Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're going to study Bird Law to win the game by gifting the opponent a 9 lives with our coveted Falcon and then destroy it with either Devastating Mastery or Cleansing Nova to win the game on the spot. So that's the core combo of the deck. So it's a 3 card combo and requires a little bit of setup but the combo is also good at keeping you alive because step 1 is often to cast a 9 lives an enchantment with Hexproof saying if a source would deal damage to you prevent the damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives when there are nine or more counters we exile it and when it leaves the battlefield for any reason we lose the game so nine lives will soak up a bunch of hits from the opponent we are still susceptible to life loss so that can still go past our nine lives but for the most part a lot of creature decks will end up putting additional counters onto the nine lives and then we want to get up to ideally five mana so we can both disguise coveted falcon and immediately flip it face up for one and a blue which will result in us gifting the opponent any number of cards we control and for each card we give them we get to draw a card as well but usually the only card we're interested in giving the opponent is our own nine lives which may also have a number of counters on it now but the goal is not to then put a ninth counter on it by attacking instead we're gonna blow up the nine lives now it does have hexproof so we can't target it with a card like get lost but we can still maybe get rid of it using devastating mastery which we can cast for just two and double white also known as the student cost and then we get to destroy all non-land permanents but not before the opponent gets a chance to return two non-land permanents they control to their owner's hands so if the opponent does decide to pick up the nine lives it just goes back to her hand they still lose the game because nine lives left the battlefield if they keep it in play it just gets destroyed by the devastating mastery so the result is the same and then with cleansing nova it can be used to destroy all creatures but we're mostly interested in destroying all artifacts and enchantments which will also clear the nine lives and therefore win us the game assuming we gave it to the opponent first and then we have a bunch of card draw to tie everything together including the full set of omen of the sea you might be wondering why omen instead of some other instant speed card draw effect well it is also a permanent that ends up on the battlefield we can occasionally sacrifice it to scry two again but we can also maybe give it to the opponent with coveted falcon which will then draw us an extra card so that can also have a bit of synergy and then of course memory deluge is an important one looking at the top x cards where x is the amount of mana spent to cast it which will initially be four mana and then later seven with a flashback so it gets to dig pretty deep to find nine lives falcon and or our sweepers to close out the game and then we've got a few counter spells with no more lies Dovin's Veto for non-creature spells, and then a bit of spot removal, including March and Get Lost, which can also maybe target enchantments or planeswalkers in the case of Get Lost. And then we've got another cheap sweeper with temporary lockdown, which can also maybe clean up the map tokens from Get Lost. And just in general, in a format that's pretty aggressive sometimes, it's nice to have a three mana sweeper as opposed to a four mana one. And then nine lives, another way of course to just buy time until we can set up the combo. And then the mana base has a few utility lands, including Restless Anchorage, as well as Field of Ruin to deal with opposing creature lands. And then I'm also playing two copies of the Meticulous Archive to surveil one when it enters, giving us a tad more card selection. And then we've got a bunch more blue-white dual lands for mana fixing. These will usually come into play untapped. And a lot of mana fixing is needed if we want to cast a double white three drop and then a double blue four drop reliably. And then we've got some channel lands for added interaction and a hall of the storm giants and other creature lands in case our combo game plan doesn't work out for some reason so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play missing nine lives as well as maybe some cheaper interaction so this one's borderline on the play we can maybe still give it a try And then maybe play Tapped Fountain, next turn play Hall. And then we'll see if we can Disguise on 3. Or if we want to keep it in hand for a while. Put on Black Red, looks to be the Vampire's deck. Okay, so we can expect some discard spells, some uh, removal as well. Since we drew another Falcon, can play one face down for the time being and then yeah we're just uh, nine lives away from assembling the combo opponent's gonna fatal push our face down card since mana value zero pay the ward that's fine at least they didn't develop their own board and we're just gonna cast deluge now I 
Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Resolves, leaving one mana for maybe a discard spell. And do we find a nine lives? We do. So we want to combine nine lives with Falcon. Problem is, there's still maybe a one turn window where opponent can find a discard spell to take away the Falcon. So do I want an extra land? Omen, even March is an option to maybe deal with Fable or a token. Maybe I grab March and nine lives and then next turn I can nine lives March the token so they get less mana and then we still have five mana to falcon flip it and then mastery hopefully to win the game and then i still have an omen in case they do disrupt a combo and i need to find a replacement piece so yeah that looks good to me there's probably no harm in waiting on the march since the vampire deck typically doesn't play instant speed sacrifice effects and maybe that'll mess up their sequencing. So hoping they can find a Thought Seize, pretty much. Should be able to beat even the larger vampires. Alright, Soren can maybe cheat something into play. So let's just deal with their token now. So likely gonna see a Vein Ripper. So now if their creatures die, they can still cause loss of life, which can get around nine lives. But uh, yeah, we just have to be a little bit careful here that our opponent cannot force me to use Falcon as well as deal 18 points of damage. But um, yeah, I think we're relatively safe here. So we'll just disguise. And then we can flip this face up at instant speed. So we can maybe soak up another hit with nine lives and then end of turn gift it to them and then next turn mastery. Point's gonna fatal push. Let them pay the ward first. And then now we gotta gift it to them. And probably just uh, nine lives. I don't think there's a reason to give them any lanes here. Since I might need them. Okay. Falcon down. And then our opponent needs to deal 16 damage here or have a discard spell. That's only 8. And then time for mastery. And then I guess Vein Ripper can still deal more damage on the way out here, so we will actually end up getting pretty low, but uh, we should still be safe. So mastery I can even cast for the full amount. bunch of triggers on the stack, so we did end up on two life here, so had our opponent maybe sacrificed a creature to Sorin earlier, we might have died, but uh, yeah, the nine lives combo gets it done, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, our hands got double nine lives, which is still kind of good in multiples, since it will make it so the counter goes onto the nine lives with the fewest counters on it, so it can keep us alive longer, so we're good against creature decks, still missing a few pieces to actually combo off. But uh, yeah, I think I'll still give it a try. Mana Confluence, Selfless Savior, so this is Amalia combo, which, uh, yeah, nine lives should be pretty good at buying time. Dovin's Veto mostly to counter Court of Calling. And 
and uh, I don't think I need to keep a veto. So I'll just surveil. And I guess another land isn't bad now that we drew Deluge. We just need to keep hitting land drops and then we can use Deluge to find both Falcon and a board wipe. Right, Fauna Shaman could be scary since it can tutor up various answers. So we're gonna start with a temporary lockdown here. And that'll buy us more time to maybe cast a deluge before we need to nine lives. Opponent could have sacrificed Savior to have it go to the graveyard, but clearly they have an answer to an enchantment here with a might to get everything back. Alright. Don't always see might in the main deck in these Amalia combo decks. But often in the 75. So, yeah, I mean, we can just keep up Deluge for now. Since even if our opponent combos off with Amalia, they won't be attacking for 20 damage yet. And we can beat infinite life gain. So there's a wild growth. Now our opponent's also kind of going wide, which is good in the face of a nine lives. And now they seem to be holding up Cord of Calling. So if I deluge, our opponent's going to respond with Cord. I think that's fine. They can put their Hamalia in play if they'd like. Finding another deluge and do I want Omen or Get Lost? Could see the advantage of Get Lost, although there is a selfless savior on the battlefield. So maybe it's just Omen. And now March, that at least can exile. So, do I need to play nine lives? We can just counter a Court of Calling. So, don't think that's necessary yet. Play this untapped so I can maybe March plus Deluge. But I'm just planning to activate Fauna Shaman, it seems. Okay, so that's fine. Likely getting Amalia. So now with Wild Growth Walker and Innkeeper, Amalia can get all the counters they'd like. But it's also going to end up destroying their own creatures. And I could always decide to counter here with a No More Lies if I'd like. Is that the plan? Opponent can just use Fauna Shaman to get another Amalia for next turn. But it does buy us time. I can cast an Omen here. Or we could just march to disrupt one of the pieces, which is also reasonable. So we'll start with the No More Lies. And our opponent's not even attacking, so they might have picked up a Court of Calling. Or they're worried about Wandering Emperor. Can still Omen since we have March available. And then land is good, No More Lies. Would be a reasonable draw as well, I assume. And then probably no need to march just yet. Still looking for Falcon and a Sweeper. Another Deluge can go to the graveyard. Plenty of them to flash back now too. So opponent's gonna probably make the same play. Fauna Shaman, get another Amalia. Discarding a Skyclave. Doesn't target 9 lives since it has X-proof. But could maybe remove a Falcon before we can flip it up. Alright, so now our opponent can pay for no more lies. So I think I'm just gonna respond to the trigger with a march on Amalia. And then I'll probably pitch a nine lives from hand, or I could get rid of a veto or no more lies. Yeah, I don't think I need both nine lives, to be honest. Whereas the counter spells could be useful. And then if I don't need to counter, I can just uh, cast a deluge instead. Okay. Opponent's gonna discard specialists. They can cast another Amalia. And 
I guess I'll counter it. Or we can let them combo off. Savior can protect one of their other creatures. And then next turn play nine lives. Now let's just slow them down. Now I didn't get to cast another card draw spell here. But we found Falcon. Alright, so nine lives plus Falcon means I'm just uh, board clear away from taking over. Now I might want to main phase Deluge just to hit a land drop. Which we found. And then Devastating Mastery is what we want as well. So play nine lives. Now the coast is clear for the opponent to do whatever they want. Adding four counters to nine lives. And time to play our Falcon. And this is the situation where having Omen is useful, since we can also give it to the opponent to draw an extra card with a Falcon. Uh, but I'll just pass a turn here. Opponent's gonna go tutoring with the Fauna Shaman. Getting another Amalia, that's fine. So we've got a few ways to approach this, but casting a march might be the way to go. And then I'll pitch the Dovin's Veto so I can keep up the Falcon's ability. So that's now another Amalia exiled. And I guess that's the last one actually, so... We stripped all the Amalias out of the Amalia combo deck. And we're about to set up our own combo. Looks like they might have a Court of Calling as their last card. Could also be a Convoke to return to the ranks to get back creatures from the graveyard, yep. And they do get back Haywire Might. But uh, of course Nine Lies does have Hexproof. Although I guess they could remove their own nine lives with the might once we give it to them. Although I guess if that happens they still lose the game. So yeah, we can still combo off anyways. So they can exile their own nine lives now. But uh, yeah, if nine lives leaves the battlefield, they still lose the game. Also just learned that the cheaper cost of mastery spells is referred to as the student cost. So that's a fun trivia question. And the combo gets there. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of our opener? It's a little slow out of the gates with some tap lands. I do have the Coveted Falcon, still missing 9 lives, with Omen to try and find it, maybe. This one's borderline, because our lands are tapped, I think we'll take a mulligan here. Alright, this is a little bit better. So, I could keep the Falcon, or I could just max out on the interaction and then keep Deluge, since typically it's better to find 9 lives before we find Falcon anyways. And then if we can sort of keep the opponent's board under control, we can pull ahead with Deluge and assemble the combo pieces. Facing mono black so far. Field of Ruin can maybe hit our Anchorage. Which does give me the opportunity to cast a Memory Deluge. So our opponent decides not to go for it. Castle could give them some late game advantage and now Thought Seize. Well, no point in using no more lies here, so... That's probably gonna take my counter spell, or maybe the Deluge. Opponent may be waiting until they could pay for the 2-mana counter spell. 
and they do take the counter. Get Lost is still a pretty versatile answer here, should they present an enchantment instead. And now my own Field of Ruin. Maybe way to show them, so I can take out Castle and then for now plan to cast Memory Deluge. Soren, that's gonna resolve. Can remove it next turn, but not before they make a token. And then grab another No More Lies and a land. So now let's see if I Field of Ruin Castle. I can still get lost Soren, but I'll be shield down on No More Lies. So I think I should wait. What if the opponent tries to Field of Ruin my Field of Ruin? Then I guess I can respond. So maybe it's still fine to play it out here. And then... We'll get Lost Sorin. Not too worried about the Vampire, even if they get to explore onto it. And then if they don't make me counter anything, I can still feel the ruin the castle end of turn. It's gonna be another Thoughtseize, fair enough. That resolves. Could see them take the Devastating Mastery as well, which we're close to casting for the full price. So they once again take our counter, and then definitely want to get a Plains with Field of Ruin, since we do need Quadruple White for Mastery. Opponent has a second castle, so it's not going to be super relevant. Another Sorin as well. Okay, so... Might end up just using Field of Ruin on Field of Ruin to preserve my anchorage. And there's Falcon, so still waiting on 9 lives. Maybe I can just cast this for 4 mana. Don't hate it, and then we could take out Sorin with Get Lost after they replay it, or I could Get Lost now, and then Mastery will essentially clean everything up. And then next turn we flash back Deluge and hopefully pull ahead. Not having Get Lost anymore could be a drawback, but uh, they basically get a one turn window to maybe present a scary threat. Excuse me for the interruption, LVD from the future here, realizing that past LVD thought that Devastating Mastery cost 7 mana to cast full price instead of 6, so of course just casting the Mastery here would be the play, instead of having to use Get Lost. Ah, there's a scary threat, Shieldred. And another Deluge. At least Deluge doesn't technically draw, so it doesn't trigger Shieldred. So we'll just wait until end of turn, flashback Deluge, and then ideally find the 9 lives. Alright, there's 9 lives, and then next turn I can play it and immediately gift it to the opponent. But of course we don't have a way to destroy the 9 lives once in play. So I might just take the land since we already have another deluge in hand. So we should be able to find more cards we need here. So take our draw, another falcon. Don't really want to disguise it unless we can flip it up right away, since it's easily gonna die to opposing removal. So, just play the 9 lives, and then... we can deluge once again. And the 9 lives will... hopefully buy us a few extra turns here. Since they're only attacking us with one threat.
Now, of course, her opponent can still drain us to death with Shieldred. But that's not a super fast clock. So that's just going to add a counter to the nine lives. And there's another Sorin, okay. I bring order to this broken world. gonna draw. Revealing a knight. That's fine, just deals regular combat damage. So it doesn't really get around the nine lives protection. And we did find the mastery, and then could grab a march as well. So next turn, play Falcon, flip it up, and then I guess we could immediately master if I grab an untap land. So that should do it. Our opponent gets nine lives. Want to be careful not to draw too many extra cards here, because there is still a shield route in play. Opponent sees what's happening. And then Cleansing Nova with an extra land could do it too, but Devastating Mastery is the plan. Nine lives goes away, and our opponent loses the game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that needs additional white mana and a nine lives. And then eventually a board clear, so we are missing quite a few pieces. But we do have good interaction, some cheap card draw, and then deluge. So I think it's keepable. And then if we haven't found another white land by turn three or turn two, Omen can look for one. Facing a red-white, looks like the Convoke deck. So temporary lockdown is backbreaking against them. So as long as we find a white source, which is most of the lands in our deck, we should be alright. The Raven Inspector. Do want to prevent them from convoking an expensive creature, if possible. Do have the March as well, which could potentially come in handy. Like if they cast a Gleeful Demolition on the clue token, I could remove it in response. But then they wouldn't be able to convoke a creature afterwards. So in this case, I would probably still go for Omen, look for a second white source, and then Lockdown. So yeah, opponent cast a Demolition. So yeah, it's an interesting choice here. Because March on the clue could be useful if I fail to draw a white source, but I have to have a little bit of faith here in my deck. Alright, that's a swing and a miss. Could keep another omen to maybe try next turn. But if I bottom here, I essentially get two looks at a white source. So, bottom, bottom. And find Deluge. Alright, so... This could still be bad. Opponent can use Warden again. Now I could still march Warden before they untap, but now they can start convoking some of their other creatures as well. Alright, never mind. Found the white source. Lockdown. Also gets rid of my own Omen of the Sea, but Omen is mostly here as an extra card we can give to the opponent with Coveted Falcon to draw an extra card. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, pretty slow hand. Could use a few more lands, but... Uh, as soon as we find land 3, we have Lockdown to catch up against Aggro, although Yorion kind of points in a different direction here. So yeah, knowing that our opponent's playing Yorion, likely a control deck, do we still keep? Lockdown's not a good card, but Double Deluge is. So I just need to hit my land drops, basically. Yeah, I mean, probably an above-average hands for a control matchup, I would say. Found the nine lives. Hopefully our opponent's not running any sweepers that can destroy enchantments. And a clay fired bricks. So they might be on a mono white. Yorion deck. 
land is good. And we've got no more lines available. And now Inspector gets exiled by lockdown. So that's acceptable. Opponent's probably going to crack the clue token here. So not in a hurry to necessarily cast a lockdown. Could just play the nine lives now or keep up no more lives. But that's maybe better once we have enough mana for Deluge. So yeah, I don't mind putting the nine lives in play. Because we have lockdown, we'll be able to deal with the opponent swarming us with small creatures. Field of Ruin. Can go after Anchorage. Did not find a land, sadly. Alright, so we could be in a little bit of trouble now. Don't really want to disguise the Falcon yet. And I'm not in a hurry to lock down, so I'll just pass. If our opponent uses Field of Ruin, that would actually allow us to use Deluge. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor instead. Seems worth countering. But yeah, if our opponent had used Field of Ruin, we can float a mana. And then have four total for Deluge, which would help find more lands. So still a long way to go here to lose the game to our own nine lives, although now it's starting to add up. So have land four for Deluge. Really want to get to land five so we can play Falcon and immediately give the nine lives, and then if it has seven or eight counters, that's fine by me. So I think I'm just going to go untapped lands with a plan of casting Deluge. Maybe take three or four more counters and then give it to the opponent. And then we'll still be at 18. Gonna be a restoration. So yeah, this is kind of a mono-white mid-range deck. Not sure what their interaction looks like. But hopefully they don't have any relevant answers to our combo. And I just want lands. Okay, so play Falcon face down. Pass a turn. And I don't have to flip it face up unless they kind of force the issue here. So discards companion, gets it back. We have Devastating Mastery in hand, so that could win the game next turn. Portable Hole going after Falcon. Let them pay the ward first. I usually go full control in scenarios like this just to be safe. And then Portable Hole Fizzles since this is now a 3 mana card. Thousand Moon Smithy, that's fine. Opponent seems to be tapped out. And this Devastating Mastery is looking pretty juicy. Alright, let's go for it. And there we have it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very promising hand. We've got all the combo pieces, including our sweeper to end the game. And then Omen for a bit of card draw. Facing Temple Garden, could be Amalia, could be Angel Life Gain. Angel Life Gain confirmed. Alright, so they shouldn't have too much to disrupt our combo. Just have to be careful not to expose Falcon to removal. And then Deluge plus land. I think the plan then is 9 lives on 3, Deluge on 4, Falcon on 5, Nova on 6. So 
So the angel life gain deck gaining a ton of life is not going to matter. And I don't think they'll get to nine counters on nine lives before we uh, give it to them. So, yeah, can deluge here just to keep hitting our land drops, although we already have five, which is all we need. Could also lock down just to deal with Jada. Yeah, I guess that's uh, fine here. Just to slow them down a little bit. Gets rid of our own Omen as well. Should they destroy it, we still get to draw some cards. They might have Boseju in the deck. And since we can turn this face up at instant speed, I can wait for the opponent to attack us and then give the nine lives afterwards. Because, yeah, they could potentially threaten 20 damage in a single attack. But I don't think they'll be able to threaten 20 damage and removal on my face down card while paying the ward cost. So just take the hits. Three counters on nine lives. And a Skyclave, that doesn't matter. Make them pay the ward. And then flip face up. And I guess we can give them the lockdown too. Because we're feeling generous. Untap. And then either Cleansing Nova on enchantments. Or Devastating Mastery could have done it too. And there we have it, Omen also comes back, although I believe our opponent's gonna die before we get to draw. Awesome, so six pretty convincing wins in a row. And we get to rank up to Diamond. So yeah, Bird Law might be the real deal. A lot of opponents didn't really have a great idea what we were up to until it was too late, which is of course a strength of a deck like this as well. But it's not like there's too many ways our opponents could have interacted with a combo. So yeah, overall, a brand new combo for the Explorer and maybe Pioneer format, and uh, should translate pretty well into best of three as well. And there's still potentially some slots you can fine-tune, but I've been pretty happy with this list so far. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.